So, to sum this up, repentance is simply another way to say, we've changed our minds, and we have now chosen Hello, welcome to the Simple Not Shallow podcast. My name is Charles, and this here is the Coffee Side Chat series. So named because of of this beautiful cup of coffee sitting on the counter right beside me. And we are coming to you from the very hallowed halls of my kitchen, University. Hmm. The kitchen counter, what better place to stand, talk, laugh, and learn together all while sipping on a very beautiful cup of coffee. Hmm. I do hope you have one sitting beside you as well. Now, let me ask you a question. What is your first reaction to the word repentance? I mean, did you just cringe a little bit? I think I saw you do so. (laughs) Anyway, I don't know about you, but all too often I have found that this word has come to have uh, a connotation of being one of the biggest, baddest, most negative words in the Christian vocabulary. People literally cringe when they hear it. And I find that to be very unfortunate, as I find this to be one of the most positive words in the Christian vocabulary. Now, to see what I mean here, we will need to look at this through the lens of what it means to be a Christian, which, as always, is a following of Christ that involves a relationship, first and foremost, leading to studentship, leading to a life lived from everything learned. Not one, not the other, but all three, all together, all at once. Or it's not really Christian faith. Now, well, I guess... What I need to do is to go back and and, and summarize all of our chats so far, as that will give us a firm basis for looking at this word in a new and positive light. See, we have talked about how Christian faith is a relationship with God, with with Jesus, right? And that this relationship involves a choice to love both God and our neighbors. And without this, there is no relationship. And we have looked into how we actually ruin things by choosing to reject God's love and the loving of our neighbors in order to embrace our own selfish desires. And in fact, that's one and the same thing. And we have seen that this turning away from him is actually to embrace ourselves, to place ourselves above everything. And we have mentioned that Jesus is the one who can help us get turned back around and right on track on the right track. Now, you may be saying, well, okay, so far, I'm following things up to this point. I mean, I think I sort of remember those past conversations, but how does this help me understand repentance in a positive manner? Or, you know, I already see repentance positively. How does this help me explain it more positively to other people? Well, allow me to offer this for your consideration. Repentance is simply our part of that equation, of the turning around process. Now, no, it's not how we earn forgiveness. It's not how we earn the possibility of reconnecting with Jesus. We can't do that. We can't earn anything. So what it is, is simply the choice to accept all he has done for us. It is the saying of yes to his love and a no to our own selfish desires. Well, in a nutshell, that is all Christian repentance truly is, the saying of yes to God and his love. I mean, There we are, one moment, with our backs turned to God, embracing ourselves, our own desires, placing ourselves first. And then God, you know, through the Holy Spirit, calls us to come back home. He makes us aware that we have turned away from Him and abandoned love. 
and he gives us the choice to turn around and come back once again. Now, if we choose to turn around and face God and start walking back home to him, then we have repented. 2 Corinthians even refers to this as the process of godly sorrow bringing repentance leading to salvation. So, to sum this up, repentance is simply another way to say we've changed our minds and we have now chosen to reject our own wants and selfish desires. We no longer want to place ourselves first and we have changed our mind to embrace God once again. We've turned back around to face Him. We have chosen to pursue love and acceptance. To pursue love and acceptance. That's not such a bad thing, is it? Now, 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 before I get accused of being wishy-washy, squishy, squashy, lovey-dovey, yuck, let me make sure we understand that what I'm saying is that part of this that we need to consider, that part of this that we need to do is to take steps to never repeat that turning away again. Or, as Luke phrases it, we need to produce fruit in keeping with repentance. See, if we do not take those steps toward God to do the things in keeping with what we have said is a change in our purpose, our direction, our thinking, then we have not truly changed anything and have not actually turned back to God. We could simply say then that we have not repented. But we can keep that discussion for a different day. But for now, I think the time has come for me to list some passages, you know, in the description area, that will show that turning back to God and accepting His forgiveness are intrinsically linked. They go together. Without this turnaround on our part, we cannot experience the forgiveness God has provided. And it's not because He doesn't want to. He's not holding out a carrot saying, you've got to turn around or I'm not going to forgive. See, it's not that he doesn't want to forgive. But what it is, is that his forgiveness is so intrinsically identified with his love that when we reject his love, you know, to embrace ourselves, we have rejected the forgiveness he offers at well, as well. I mean, you can't have one without the other. So, what have we learned about our big, bad, negative word? Well, repentance is truly nothing other than choosing and then expressing love for God. Choosing love. What could be more positive than that? Now, as always, please tell me what you think about this. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? And please, do me a favor. Don't just say, hey, screwball, you got this wrong. I've been wrong about other things. Just telling me I'm wrong doesn't do me any favors. Do me the honor of telling me why you think I'm mistaken. For that is how conversations begin. Conversations that can help us both grow in our relationship with Christ and as friends. Now, we may never agree, but that's okay. People can disagree and still love each other, still grow in their relationship with Christ. We must agree on the essential things and give grace on the non-essential things. Thank you for doing so. Well, until next time then, may you live life to the fullest, embracing the choice to turn around and return to love. And may you fully shun the turning away from it ever again. And may you take it easy, take it slow, and may coffee into your cup always flow. Hmm, I'm a poet. <laughs>